Down through the ages, mentors have played a critical role in teaching and learning. Unfortunately, today we often scoff at skilled work. A wedge has been driven between the brain and the hand in public and especially in higher education. Yet it is skilled mentors and their apprentices and the interaction between these experts and their apprentices that have produced humanity's greatest creations. In fact, the Latin root of the word education is edifice, which means building. The skilled trades workers' capability of imagining of planning, of construction, requires levels of skills every bit as high as any other. Teamwork is essential, and the results speak for themselves. Yet these skills are dismissed as less important than any upper division level in college. Lacking the teamwork skills can be disastrous. If the corporate boardrooms across the country, if in those boardrooms the CFO is afraid to tell the CEO and the CEO is afraid to tell the board what is really in the books, we all know the results of what happens. I think those guys would do a better job. In building, in making something, a deeper learning process takes place than in memorizing facts and figures. John Dewey and his colleagues emphasized this in the importance of experiential learning, which we all do after school. Dewey said, there's no such thing as genuine knowledge and fruitful understanding except as the result of doing. People have to do something to things to which they wish to find out about. They have to alter conditions, alter conditions. This digital painting was created by a senior at High Tech High. High Tech High is a 40% free lunch charter public school in San Diego in a project called Picasso's Influence on High Tech High. To me, these schools in San Diego reached the epitome of project-based instruction. And they very consciously followed Dewey in putting the vocational product above the academic skill, the result of the doing that comes from having the skill. And look at what you get. Allowing children's tinkering, their discovery, whether they're creating digital paintings, or playing drums, or playing soccer, what they own, what the children themselves feel they own is what is critical. Positive peer relations, love, caring between children, between the caregivers, their mentors, their teachers, all reinforce the child's feeling, I did this, my input counted. What I wanted was understood, I made this. Ultimately, this child's taking the family's produce to market, as you can see, counts more than those tens of thousands of teenagers hanging out on the streets and the malls of our cities. Now, while all of this is happening, while a child is growing, wondering, learning, all of this takes the form of narrative a narrative in the learning process, a narrative the child is telling herself. And it's inseparable from our minds. It's how our minds develop. You all have stories right now in your heads. You have stories about you're sitting here, about me. I don't want to hear them. <laughs> what we tell ourselves from the, our minds, how we react to every situation, we can think of narrative as that evolving story of our lives. The girl in the blue jeans 
is disabled from the waist down. She's just been given a wheelchair specially made for these trips to the mountains. And when she was asked how she felt about sitting in that wheelchair, she said, I feel like a queen. Her father said it was the first vacation he ever had. There's little difficulty in jumping from that to understanding how deeply meaningful in their lives that story is. A story that is enriched in the girl's life by her father being present and in these trips, these adventures in the mountains, the parent always goes along with the child. Storytelling is so vitally important in learning, it cannot be stressed enough. In the 1985 study, Becoming a Nation of Readers, the product of extensive research by this country's experts on teaching reading, the single most conclusive result of that study was that the most important way we can teach children how to read is to tell stories. If you haven't read it, really must reading for after school is Robert Halpern's pamphlet on literacy and after school programs. It is through hearing stories, stories of heroes and villains, of the little engine that could, of the next door neighbor, that children compare their own experiences to the stories they're hearing and they figure out what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. In this picture, my wife is uh, telling stories and the children are listening to the teacher because the teacher is translating Sally's stories into Bengali. And they loved it. Afterwards, our guide told us, they know that story. Everyone knows the story of the boy who cried wolf. Here is the most popular children's story in the world, Cinderella. The first recorded version of Cinderella, and Cinderella comes in all different names and guises, and the prince and different things, and the carriage and different things, was actually from China in the ninth century. But why wouldn't it be the favorite story? A wonderful dream about changing life, about getting the opportunity to be and do something amazing. We shouldn't be afraid of. In fact, we should encourage this dream world of children. Now, just as important in childhood development is play. They haven't forgotten this at 8,000 feet high in the mountains near Darjeeling in this ancient Buddhist monastery where these boys are playing cricket. But the American Academy of Pediatrics has had to warn us that there is imminent danger to the health of American children right now in the less time they're getting to play, in the less time that parents are taking to play with their children. You know that play is a right of children according to the United Nations Human Rights Commission? And yet play is being cut out of our elementary schools. Recesses are disappearing from middle schools. Can you imagine that? And physical education is being more and more straitjacketed in high school. Play is essential to the cognitive processes, the social interactions, the emotional well-being of children. Why let children play? Participate in games? Howard Gardner, you all know Howard Gardner from Multiple Intelligences, says that play is the basis of theory. Children are theorizing about how what they're playing corresponds to the real world. Theorizing is certainly no less important in education. 